Once upon a time, three little engines lived in their own little shed on their own little railway. Duke was brown, Falcon blue, and Stuart green. Duke was the oldest. He had been the first engine on the line and named after the Duke of Sodor. He was proud of this and wanted everything just so. Whenever the others did anything they shouldn't, he would say, That would never suit his grace. Other engines came and went, but Duke outlasted them all. Stuart and Falcon used to call him Grandpa. Duke was fond of them and tried to keep them in order. They were fond of him too, as he was so wise and kind, but they did get tired of hearing about his grace. Sometimes they would wink at each other and chant solemnly, Engines come, engines go, Grandpa goes on forever. You impertinent scallywags, Duke would say indignantly. What are our young engines coming to nowadays? Never mind, Grandpa. Where are the young ones? Well, you better mind, unless you wind up like number two, or smudge as I call them. Ooh, Ooh Grandpa, Grandpa what's what happened? happened? Smudger, said Duke, was American and very cocky. He rode roughly and often came off the rails. I wanted him to be careful. Listen, bud, he drawled. In the States, we don't care a dime for a few spills. We do here, I said, but he just laughed. But he didn't laugh when the manager took away his wheels and said it was going to make him useful at last. Why? What, what did he do? He turned him into a pumping engine, or a generator in another term. He's still there, behind our shed. Stuart and Falcon were unusually good for several days. They became useful engines, and all three were happy together for many years. But hard times came. The mines closed one by one and the engines had little to do. At last, their line was closed, and people came to buy the engines. We'll, we'll take Stuart and Falcon. and Falcon, they said, but no one wanted Duke. They thought him too old. Cheer up, Grandpuff, called Stuart as they went away. We'll find a nice railway, and you can come and keep us in order. They all laughed bravely, but not one of them thought it would ever come true. Duke's driving fireman oiled and greased him. They sheeted him snugly and said goodbye. They had to go away and find work. Duke was alone, locked up in his shed. Where's his grace? He wondered. It's not like him to forget me. But his grace had been killed in the war, and the new Duke, a boy, hadn't heard of his little engine. Oh well, said Duke to himself. I'll go to sleep, and I'll have to pass the time. Years passed. Winter torrents washed soil from the hills over the shed. Trees and bushes grew around. You wouldn't have known a shed was there, let alone a little engine asleep inside. Have you guessed about Stuart and Falcon? Yes, you're quite right. They came to the Fin Controllers Railway. He gave them new coats and new names. Stuart became Peter Sam, and Falcon Sir Handel. They prefer their new names. That was a long time ago, but they never forgot Grandpa, and often talked about him when alone. They were excited to hear that Duke was coming to Scar Lois and Renee's 100th birthday, but most disappointed with the Duke who actually came, for he was only a man. But we must say no more, or we will spoil the next story. Ever since Scar Lois and Renee's had their 100th birthday, Peter Sam had been worried. He kept on saying that the real Duke never came. Rubbish, said Duncan. Of course he was real. All the same, Peter Sam persisted. He wasn't our Duke. Our Duke, said Sir Handel. He's an engine. Yours is as bad as he is. All engine Dukes were scrapped, asked Duke. Duke doesn't know everything. Scarlery put in quietly. Tell us about him, you two. Here is one of the stories that Peter Sam and Zahandel told about Grandpa. It happened when Zahandel was new to the line. Now have you remembered that in those days he was called Falcon and painted blue? You have? Now we can begin. The manager came to see him one day and said he was pleased with his work so far. Now Falcon, he went on, you must learn 
the mountain road. Yes, please, sir, said Falcon, excited. So tomorrow you shall go double-heading on it with Duke. He'll explain everything. Falcon didn't like this. He thought Duke was a fusspot and a regular old fuddy-duddy. Duke's train was one for holidaymakers. He called it the picnic. Falcon was ready when Duke arrived. Duke drew forward beside him. Listen, he said. The mountain road is difficult. You take the train and I'll couple in front. No, said Falcon. I'll lead. How can I learn the road with you lumbering ahead, blocking the view? Suit yourself, said Duke shortly. But never mind the view. Attend to the track. Look at the track, he puffed again on starting. Never mind the view. Fusspot, fusspot, puffed Falcon on starting. Fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy. They rattled through the first tunnel, looped round, recrossed the river, and entered the second, climbing all the time. Their speed grew slower and slower. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle, urged Falcon. No hurry, no hurry, puffed Duke, stoidly. The tunnel was curved and pitch dark. Falcon felt stifled. He wanted to get out. Presently, the light grew. Two ribbons of track appeared ahead in the gloom. Watch the track! Watch the track! Warned Duke. Fusspot, fusspot, scoffed Falcon. The tunnel mouth grew larger and larger, till at last they burst into the sunshine. The line here swung sharply right. It was laid on a ledge cut in the hillside. Below lay the valley where they had come. Track and buildings looked tiny, like toys. No one quite knows what happened next. Duke said there must have been something on the track, and Falcon hadn't kept a good lookout. Falcon said he was dazzled, so how could he keep a good lookout? Anyway, their coaches had barely cleared the tunnel when Falcon lurched. His front wheels derailed, crunched over the sleepers and ballast. He came to a rest with one wheel uncomfortably near the edge. Duke had saved Falcon. Now he held on grimly with locked wheels and taut couplings. Young idiot! He hissed. Stop it! I can't hold you if you shake! Falcon tried hard to stop shuddering. Quickly, Duke's driving farmer chocked his wheels and strengthened the coupling between the two engines. Thank you, said Duke. Now I'll manage. With Duke secure, the two crews, helped by a plate layer, propped up Falcon's front end. They were looking forward to a rest when Duke began weeching in an alarming way. His fireman ran to the cab. Water! He cried. We want water, quickly! The plate layer's cottage stood nearby. He explained to his wife, and the passengers borrowed jugs, buckets, kettles, saucepans, and anything, in fact, which would hold water. They formed a chain from the well to the engine, and passed them from hand to hand. The fireman, meanwhile, reduced his fire and anxiously watched the gauge. It was hot and tiring work, for Duke needed many gallons, but at last the fireman shouted cheerfully, We're waiting! Don't weaken! And they all set to work again with a will. They cheered again when the breakdown gang arrived. They showed other passengers how to help them lever Falcon back to the rails. The manager was at the top station. He said he was sorry about the accident and thanked the passengers for their help. Not at all, they said. We admire, we admire the, the way, way you put, put things right and enjoy, and enjoy the, the adventure. adventure. They thanked Duke and his crew for preventing a nasty accident. Your Duke is a hero. He stood, he stood firm, firm like, like a bulldog, a bulldog and, and just let wouldn't go. let go. Thank you, Falcon said. I don't know why you bothered after I'd been so rude. Oh well, replied Duke. You just had a new coat of paint. It would have been a pity if you rolled down the mountain and spoiled it. That would never have suited his grace. Duke's picnic was a train for summer visitors. It was his special train. Many people came year after year just to see him. He always pulled it, even if he felt poorly. You mustn't disappoint my friends, he would say. That would never suit his grace. The morning run gave no trouble. He took his passengers up the line and stopped anywhere they wanted. He and his driver knew all the best places for picnics. Beep, 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 
He whistled as they waved goodbye. Please don't be late when I come back. We might miss the boat, and that would never do. One day, Duke felt poorly at the end of his first picnic journey. He had been short of steam and was glad of a rest before starting back. His driver and fireman had just finished cleaning his tubes when Stuart bustled in. Hello, Grandpuff. Are you short of puff? None of the sort. Routine mates. Tell you what, Grandpuff, you're getting old. You need to take care. We'll have to keep you in order. Or one day you'll break down. <laughs> That'll be a day. You keep me in order. Impudence. He puffed away, whooshing crossly from his drain cocks. Duke couldn't stay cross for long. It was a lovely evening. All the picnic parties were ready, the coaches ran well, and they lost no time anywhere. Couldn't be better, couldn't be better, he chanted happily. They began the climb, the work was harder, but Duke didn't mind. I've plenty of steam, he panted. We'll be up in a couple of puffs. He needed more than that though, his puffs changed to wheezes. It's not so easy, it's not so easy. My old valves would start blowing, but now I'll manage, I'll manage. But the leaks became worse and soon he was whooshing hoarsely with escaping steam. Duke's driver examined him carefully at the next station while the guard went to the telephone. Anxious passengers gathered around. Two engines are coming, the guard reported. With luck, we'll be away in 15 minutes. You'll easily catch our boat. Falcon buffered up in front. Poor old Grandpuff, he hooshed importantly. What a shame, you've broken down. Peep, peep, this is the day, whistled Stuart cheekily. He was coupled on behind. Peep, 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 are you ready? Whistled Falcon. Peep, 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 yes I am, replied Stuart, and away they went. Falcon had left his train at the middle station, Arrived there, the cavalcade split up. Falcon went down to the port with Duke's picnic, while Stuart headed Falcon's train with Duke couple behind. Stuart was excited. Fancy me rescuing Grandpuff. This is the day, this is the day. He chortled gleefully. Poor Grandpuff. He's much too old. We'll have to keep him in order now. He thought. But firmly, that's it. We'll allow him to ru to have runs sometimes, but Falcon and I will do the real work. Grandpuff will be cross, but we can't help that. Poor old engine, poor old engine. He puffed kindly. Duke was by no means crippled. His vowels sounded worse than they were. He could have kept his train, but his driver said, No! Our passengers will only be worried! Duke agreed. He didn't want to spoil their day. He listened to Stuart chortling and smiled. He and his driver had their own joke ready. At first they used just enough steam to keep moving, but the last half mile was uphill. No! said his driver. He advanced the regulator and Duke responded with a will. He puffed and roared as though the whole train's weight was on his buffers. People heard the noise from far away. They ran to see what was happening. At the workstation, Duke uncoupled and went along the loop to the water tank. A boy on the platform asked, Why were there two engines on this train, Daddy? It's most unusual. It is, said his father. But today was different. Stuart broke down, you see, and they had to call Duke out to help him. Duke had a hard job too, by the sound of it. Well, for crying out loud! exclaimed Stuart. He vanished in a cloud of steam. Duke wheezed alongside. Poor old engine, he chuckled. It's no good, Stuart. You can't win. Duke's story soon spread. The engines told Mr. Hugh, Mr. Hugh told the Finn controller, the Finn controller told the owner, the owner told his grace, his grace told the small controller, the small controller told the Finn clergyman, and the Finn clergyman told the fat one. That is why, one morning, the two clergymen and the small controller were looking at maps. Our railway is laid on the bed of the old one, said the small controller. 
but swings round to end at the road south of that village. The old line kept straight on. It went north of the village and then to the mountains. The maps show the works at the old station. If Duke is anywhere, he's there. Are, Are you writing, writing another, another book, book, sir? sir? Yes, but not about you, said the thin clergyman. He smiled at their downcast faces. Cheer up, he went on. It's about a nice old engine who is lost. But if you're good, the artist might put you in the pictures. Oh, oh thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. So the clergyman told them about Duke, Falcon, and Stuart. So you see, he continued, poor Duke was left alone. The three small engines sighed sympathetically. And we want to find him, and mend him, and make him happy again. Your controller wants to help, but he can't if you're naughty. The three small engines promised to be good as gold. The three men spent days and days at the old station. They came up every morning on one of the engine trains. He always whistled, Good, good luck. luck! As they walked up the track. But they had nothing in the evening except scratches and torn clothes. They wouldn't give up though. Duke's here, here somewhere. somewhere. They said. The fat clergyman found him in the end. Scrambling over a hillock, he trod on something which wasn't there, crashed through a hole, and landed, legs astride, on Duke's saddle tank. Ah, sleepy beauty himself! He shouted. The thin clergyman and the small controller peeped through the hole above. Excuse me? inquired Duke. Are you a vandal? Driver told me vandals break in and smash things. The fat clergyman ruefully felt his bruises. Bless you, no! He laughed. I'm quite respectable. I've dropped in because I couldn't find your door. And he told Duke about Falcon and Stuart. So they did remember, said Duke softly. Does his grace approve? Yes, he's coming. To see me? How kind! And I'm all dirty! That'll never do. Please clean me. So they set to work, and by the time the small controller had fetched his grace, Duke was the cleanest of anyone in the shed. Early next morning, Mike brought workmen and tools. They enlarged the fat clergyman's hole, lifted Duke out, and put him on a low loader to take him away by road. I'd be ashamed to travel by road, Duke protested. It's, it's, it's undignified. I'm sorry, Duke, said his grace. But the small railway has no suitable trucks. Duke gave in then, but so many people came out and greeted him that he felt better. So they still remember me, he thought happily. Donald was waiting with a flat truck. Everyone cheered when Duke was lifted onto it, and still more when he started along the big railway on the last stage of his journey to his new home. Peter, Sam and Sir Handel were on early turn. They peeped out to the shed. He's there. They whispered. Shush! Duke opened his eyes. You woke me! He grumbled. In my young days, engines were... Seen and not heard, Grumpuff. Remember? I remember two idle good-for-nothings named Stuart and Falcon. Good for you, Grandpuff. We're glad you've come. We can keep you in order now. Keep me in order? Impertinence! Be off! The pair chuffed away, well content. Impudent scallywags. But his old eyes twinkled, and for the first time in years he smiled as he dozed in the sun.